We're going to start with architecture by looking at elements of structure, starting with the most basic, post and lintel. So we're looking at systems of construction or structural support. And a post and lintel is where we have two uprights with a lintel, which is the horizontal piece run across the top. And this is the most basic form of construction. In fact, if you ever played with Legos or you ever played with wooden blocks, you've probably created basic post and lintel construction. However, there's a weakness here, and that is the lintel itself, because what we have is a mix of compression and tension forces. We constantly have a pull from the weight of the lintel itself or the wall above it, pulling down in the middle. So that's a problem. For example, Stonehenge, stone doesn't have a lot of tinsel strength, but it's great under compression. So these can only be so wide. And it's a limitation we run into a lot. Imagine a home where you pull out the wrong wall and suddenly you've got what should be a load-bearing wall pushing on nothing more than a two by four, where it's going to bend that, the weight of the structure is going to bend that very, very easily and potentially break it. Now to get around this in ancient times, oftentimes what we will see is a relieving triangle. And the relieving triangle exists so that we can take that weight off the lintel. So here we see the lintel has nothing above it. All the weight above it, no matter how high I build, is being pushed down into the posts themselves. And of course that means that we're putting everything in compression and being a stone building, this makes a lot of sense. Here we're doing the same thing. This wall would have been higher in ancient times and we're pushing it all down in compression. The stone you see in the middle is much, much lighter. So this stone isn't putting much force on the lintel and you'll notice that it overlaps down to the posts once again. So again, pushing that weight down through the posts and trying to take as much weight as possible off of the lintel. Now, in Egypt and Greece, we usually see this done through the use of columns. And oftentimes they will add flourishes known as capitals and bases. You do not need to memorize the different kinds of capitals. But these capitals and bases come from when we used to use old wooden columns or wooden columns in more ancient times before they were working with stone. You would simply cut down a tree, strip off the bark, and then stand it upright. Sometimes the tree might sprout again, depending on the kind of tree, and that gives them the idea of a capital, which basically exists to transition us from the verticality of the column to the horizontal of the lintel above it. Greek columns are created in three different forms. We have the Doric, the Ionic, and the Corinthian. I will again not make you memorize these, but I'd like you to be aware that there are different forms that are used, but they're all doing basically the same thing. By the way, when I mentioned that we used to strip the bark off of trees in ancient times before we made them into columns, that would have left flat strips along the column. By the time we get to the Egyptians and the Greeks, when they create stone columns, they mimic those flat areas and eventually create fluting. And if I were to flip one of these up on end, you would see the kind of flutes like this all the way around the column, probably better than my drawing. Those flutes are purely stylistic. They don't need to be there. They're not structural but they make the column look more interesting. They make it more beautiful compared to just a smooth stone column. 